What's a local rumor you heard as a kid that turned out to be true years later? Number one. I grew up where there were some signs of Native Americans. I started believing that this one particularly beautiful spot had to be sacred and was probably a burial ground. I'd convince my friends to hold hands in a circle and try to commune with the dead. After I got a bit older, I was super embarrassed that I had ever done such things. A few years later, a Native American came by and told us how sacred the land was that we owned and asked for permission to hold peyote rituals with his tribe and others on our land. To this day, they still come out and set up a teepee and drum all night, absolutely flying on hallucinogenics. Turns out I was right. OP must have some kind of spiritual connection. That's kind of cool that OP was able to know it was a sacred land and probably a burial ground and be right about it. Just to have that vibe in the air and know, I wonder if there's any actual, like, I don't know, chemical, scientific, whatever reason for that. Like, you can feel the decomposing stuff in the air subconsciously. Okay, the more I talk about it, the more it sounds like garbage. So I'm going to stop. That being said, I have one last thing to say, and that's that I think it's really cool that Opie and Opie's family more likely allowed the Native Americans to practice whatever they were doing on the land. Number two, U.S. Midwest. Rumor has it that way, up the old road out of town, somewhere in the woods, was a satanic cult that held seances and other mystical rituals by firelight, scared the willies out of us kids, and our parents wouldn't let us ride our bikes anywhere on that road. Decades later, I was working on a commissioned history project for the town and talked to the old man who owned the oldest homestead in the county, way back in the woods along that road. While photographing the creek that ran through the stone foundation basement of the home, which the settlers used for water generations ago, I noted the burned-out tea candles everywhere. Guy lit up and said, Yeah, back in my younger days, me and my wife used to host elaborate costume parties at the property, often by candlelight for the fun of it. He'd heard the rumors of the satanic cult and thought it was hilarious, so he and his friends ran with it and held parties in monk's robes and had bonfires and lived it up. He still laughs about it, and now so can I. I do love when people just lean into stuff like this. It makes it way funnier for, well, way funnier for them, way more interesting for the other people, too. I think it's an all-around win. Also, I do recognize that was not a Midwestern voice. Look, I'm doing my best. We have a membership for those who like more naughty and interesting stories that aren't advertiser-friendly. Check out the link in the description and join our amazing Confessions community so you can support the channel. Number three. The most popular boy in middle school disappeared after seventh grade. Literally, his parents sold their house and moved to a new house nearby, but pretty secluded. He enrolled in a really expensive private school, and cut off all ties with his friends. At the same time, a really popular male social studies teacher went on leave. Rumors circulated that the boy was touched by the teacher, and that's why they were both gone. The other popular kids got really upset when people said that because they really liked the teacher and the kid. Eventually, people just stopped talking about it. Fast forward to senior year in high school. He shows up at our prom as the date of his fifth grade girlfriend. First time anyone had seen him in years. Apparently, he reached out to the girl to ask if she had a date because he wanted to see all of his old friends one last time. Apparently, he was touched by the teacher during tutoring sessions at the teacher's home. The school district and his parents agreed to bury it in exchange for tuition to the private school. He never wanted to leave and really resented his parents for it. By the time prom rolled around, he was 18 and they couldn't stop him. He wanted to set the story straight and let everyone know he was sorry for just disappearing. Number four, one of my fourth grade teachers seemed a bit creepy and loved taking pictures of his class. A few years later, he got busted with a few gigabytes of content of children on his computer. This was in the 90s. Much later, like after I finished high school and college, I decided to Google his name again. He got out of prison after eight or nine years and within a year got busted again and immediately went back. A few gigabytes? In the 90s? This is a sick piece of garbage. I'm surprised he even made it out of jail. Number five, this is a little more lighthearted, but when I was in elementary school, probably like third grade, all the kids in my class would joke about how our primary teacher and our Spanish teacher liked each other. We were all little kids, so of course it was just dumb little kids joking around. That is, until a few years later when I was in middle school, 
and found out my old teacher and Spanish teacher recently got married. I'm going to assume by OP saying it was more lighthearted that this wasn't any sort of cheating deal like often happens in schools. And that's really cute. Number six. When I was in high school, there were rumors about a kid in my class assaulting a bunch of kids. He was a very weird kid. Everyone assumed it wasn't true, though, and just a mean rumor. During a class, another kid said something to him about it, and he angrily shouted back about how nothing has been proven yet. The entire class just stopped and awkwardly stared at him. That was 30-some years ago. He is still in prison for intimately assaulting dozens of kids while working in his church's nursery. Number 7. The park we used to play football at used to be a cemetery. They exhumed all the coffins and moved them years before I was born. We'd freak each other out, especially at night, saying there were still bodies buried there. One day we were playing and they were doing some groundskeeping work and they found a coffin. The state came out and found 30 more. We were actually playing on top of hallowed ground. Number 8. There was this jerk in my junior high gym class, real bully type. And when he would act out, everyone would ridicule him for his mother being a druggie. We would laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. Well, it, uh, turned out to be true. There was a public confirmation in the paper. And his bullying made a lot more sense because it turned out his home life was what you'd expect from someone having a full-on druggie as a mother. No one talked about it anymore, and we didn't laugh so much anymore either. Ironically, I think he felt so ashamed when everyone found out that he actually stopped being such a jerk. Can I say it's at least a little bit uplifting? Although kind of sad that it has to be uplifting, but it is kind of uplifting that the kids didn't double down after finding out. I feel like there are definitely some groups of children out there who would absolutely just run with that information, basically just torture the kid. And I'm glad that doesn't seem to be the case here. He really didn't need the extra hardships. Number nine. There was a rumor at my high school that the building down the way was a cult. It wasn't unheard of to dare people to go over there, and then you'd end up being followed or sometimes invited to dinner. Turns out it was the HQ of the cult the Duggars were in. IBLP. I was watching that documentary and my mind was blown because all the high school rumors had been true all along. Number 10. There was a rumor in our high school that a teacher was into children. We didn't know who exactly, but we had some guesses. We found out a long time after that the supposed teacher had assaulted, tortured, and murdered a few kids over the years. And he got caught after the cops started investigating. I think he slipped up somewhere, but I'm not sure how they found him. Turns out he was a predator assaulter the entire time during school. And we weren't aware, since he would prey on children and not. Teenagers. Hope you rot in jail, Mr. Sanders. If you've made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. Number 11. There was a kid in my middle school class who was a real jerk to everyone. Struggled with even simple classwork and was good at sports, but fought so much they wouldn't hardly ever let him play. One day he pushed too far and the whole class decided to mock him for the jersey he wore to school every day. And how he only wore undershirts and the same two pairs of pants. No gym clothes either, and a ratty pair of shoes. Turns out his parents were alcoholic crap piles, and he lived with his very old grandmother and basically raised himself. Couldn't afford clothes and barely got enough from her social security to feed the both of them. Found out when me and a couple of friends found him sobbing in the bushes after school because he didn't want to go home and worry his granny. Some guys ended up buying him clothes and helped him get some cleats to play soccer. My mom let me buy him lunches on my account, too, since the free school. Lunch was basically a piece of bread with half a slice of cheese and a wilted apple. Dude is now a financial manager and doing well. This is another amazingly uplifting one. I feel like reading these stories, I've heard so many about kids being absolutely awful, that these are just, they, they touch my heart. It's so nice. Number 12. There was a rumor that a couple of guys after a party took a drunk girl and assaulted her in the car on the way to a field. She died by suffocation, and to hide the evidence, the boys put firecrackers in her mouth to destroy the dental evidence. Then they buried her and came to school the next day like nothing happened. Well, it was true, as my film teacher told us the story in detail and showed us mug shots. Number 13. When I was in junior high in the early 2000s, 
there was a rumor about one of my female classmates and the male gym teacher. Of course, we all thought it was a rumor, but a few years later, it came out that he was sleeping with multiple students. Watching everyone's faces as they realized the rumors we heard were true was pretty wild. That girl also ended up just disappearing after it all came out, probably dropped out or moved schools. I feel bad for her. She was a victim, but no one talked about her like she was. Number 14. A teacher at my high school was fired, and the rumor was that it was because he was in a relationship with a former student. Turned out to be true, but the school fired him for marrying a former student, despite the fact that she was his student during his first year of teaching in the 70s, when she was 17 and he was 25. They met again for the first time and dated 30 years later when she was 47 and he was 55. Didn't matter. School accused him of grooming a student, fired him, and tried to have criminal charges pressed against him. Now, I feel like I'm a little more sensitive to the whole grooming thing than a lot of people are. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong here. That's not the point I'm trying to make. What I am saying is that even I, when I find most cases of any kind of stuff like this disgusting, realize there's no problem with this. Like what problem did they think they were solving by firing him? They met again 30 years later. Like this isn't even close to grooming. Admittedly, it must have been kind of weird to be like, I taught you 30 years ago. But like, what, 55, 47, completely normal age gap for people dating that old. Basically, this is a long-winded way of saying school stupid number 15. I have two, both about elderly men. First, there was an elderly man that could be seen walking all over town. Long gray beard, usually seen in tattered clothes. Walking man or the silver bullet were nicknames for him. The rumor was he was actually really wealthy, but lots of people just assumed he was homeless because he was always walking, carrying groceries or whatever. Well, about a year before he passed, it came out that he actually was one of the wealthiest residents in our town. And we found this out when he donated millions to local youth programs and schools. Turns out, he just liked walking a lot and placed no value on material things like clothes and cars. Second, there was an elderly man who was actually homeless. The rumor was that he drank himself crazy some years back and just never got help. He was in and out of jail a bunch, but always seemed to be given some slack by law enforcement. This truth is tragic. He did drink himself crazy out of necessity. He was a paramedic. One night, he responded to a wreck that turned out to be his wife and daughter, who had been hit by a distracted driver speeding on a narrow road. Neither survived. Understandably, he was never okay after that. He would sometimes check the pizza shop I used to manage for spare slices. Broke my heart that all I could do was offer him some free pizza. Hope you can rest in peace now, Red. Number 16. Kid in my third grade class was always late to school. I'm talking once he showed up to school, five minutes before classes were released to go home. The rumor among parents and teachers was that his mom was an alcoholic, and dad lived a couple of towns over, so he often had to wait for his dad to take him or take care of his mom until she was well enough to drive. This was a private school with no bus. She died of liver failure a few months ago, according to Facebook. Makes it so much more screwed up that everyone knew, including the teachers, and didn't have any sympathy for him. I distinctly remember the teacher telling him on multiple occasions that it was his responsibility to show up on time. He was eight. What is he supposed to do? Drive himself. I've said this before. If there's no bus or anything, attendance is not a kid issue until like, I don't know, mid-high school. Because, yeah, for real, what are the kids supposed to do? It is not their responsibility. It really is the parents. Number 17. There was a summer camp in East Tennessee my scout troop used to go that was out of council, so we had to be invited. And there was this hike that was the part of the first year's class. Class was pretty much how not to die at summer camp. And it took you to this beautiful overlook that gave gorgeous views of the valley and the part of the Appalachians we were in. Thing is, this overlook was outside of camp property, or so we were told. So they had to get permission every time they took the kids out there, and the area was strictly off-limits to everyone. Of course, rumors and legends were everywhere in this camp, and being the mid-2000s, one of them was that if you went to the overlook at night, the lights in the valley below spelled gay. Keep in mind, gay was the funny word back then, and everything among middle and high school boys was called gay. Now we'd heard this legend for years, and one year, 
due to shenanigans my troop got up to, we were told we wouldn't be invited back the following year. So a couple of my friends got together on the last night of camp and said, you know what? If we don't go tonight, we'll never be able to confirm or deny the legend, so let's sneak out and put this thing to rest. So we snuck out after lights out, took the two to three mile hike out to the overlook, and I swear right hand to God, the lights below actually spelled out in messy but clear legible letters, capital G. We all kind of just stood there for a few minutes in stunned silence because absolutely none of us expected it to be even partially true. And I'm sure no one believed us when we told them and thought we were perpetuating a lie, but I swear it actually said that. This is an incredible rumor to find out is true. This is like the kind of urban legend you hope to have in your childhood, I don't know. There's something so beautifully juvenile about it, and the fact that it's true is just so good. Number 18. Everyone at my school knew someone who knew someone who told them that this one house just down the road from the school was owned by a locally known drug dealer, and it was his emergency hideout house. Years later, I was driving past and laughed at how ridiculous the story was. Two weeks after that, the house was on the news with armed police surrounding it. Turns out it really was his drug hideout, and the guy was involved in way more stuff than that. They found drugs, weapons, and evidence of a human trafficking ring in there. The house got mysteriously burned down while his court case was going on and has been a burned-out, empty lot ever since. Number 19. The kids would tell stories, and one that reoccurred was about the girl who unalived her parents with scissors. In a town of 300 in an isolated area, nothing ever happened, so even as a kid it was pretty easy to dismiss. My senior year, my class found out our teacher told us all the details. He was the only person in the county with a color camera, so he was drafted as the official photographer. It was during a cold snap, so by the time state police arrived, the scene was frozen. The temperature was so low that our teacher's camera froze up and he had to fake it, then returned later with the sheriff to retake the pictures. The girl was being touched by Dad, and the mother knew. So one night, she stabbed them in their sleep with a pair of scissors. She dragged the bodies to the garage and attempted to burn them but the only thing she had that was combustible was some perfume. She then came up with a story and ran to the neighbors. A few years ago, I shared on Reddit and did a little research. Turns out she was sent to the state mental hospital. She was released on a temporary insanity plea. However, she was assaulted at the hospital and got pregnant. She has a Facebook page, but I stopped there. I just know she's living in state and didn't want to dredge up anymore. When I posted on Reddit before, I shared an article that had her name and that became searchable. She had a sister who was away in college. The sister had a daughter who contacted me. The sisters never talked again, but the niece was raised on a different story. She grew up hearing that her aunt was a drug addict. She was told her sister just snapped, and the parents were saints who took care of their problem child. This is a pretty dramatic story for a small town. I'm surprised it wasn't more common knowledge to be actually true, but at the same time, I can see why a small town would also want to just forget about something like this. That poor girl went through a lot, very young. My heart goes out to her. Number 20. It was a local urban legend that this huge, old, and abandoned house was haunted. Because like, a century ago, there was a murder there. Kids would freak each other out over it, tell ghost stories, sneak onto the property, whatever. I thought it was just that, an urban legend about an abandoned house. Nope. In the early 1900s, the husband and wife were found dead in the house, and it was never solved. The son was suspected because he was missing and never found. No one moved into it after that, and it sat empty ever since. I only found out because they planned to tear it down to build apartments on the property two years ago, but the local community rallied to preserve it. Number 21, that a quiet and polite dude we knew growing up was a murderous and ruthless gang leader. We used to go to his parties, we saw him on the town, and always exchanged pleasantries. We would see him at the bar, and there was little indication he was not to be messed with. Until one day we bumped into him in a parking lot, again, exchanging pleasantries. How are you? What's going on this weekend, etc.? A truck pulled up a couple of spots over. He said just a sec, and calmly walked over to talk to the guy. A short conversation ensued, and he opened the driver door and started pummeling him like on top of him in the driver's seat, punching down. We were stunned. After a short while, he got out of the truck and walked back to calmly finish his conversation with us like nothing happened. 
We saw the truck pull away, so we think the guy lived. A few years afterwards, more rumors surfaced about him, and it made sense that they were true. Until one day his arrest made international headline news, he received a heavy sentence for a ton of different crimes. He likely won't ever be free, and his affiliates are still doing business. Number 22. When I was a little kid, like seven, and roaming around the neighborhood with my gang of little rascals, this was in the 50s when kids could safely play outside all day with their pals, without parental worry. There was a rumor that in the house two doors over from mine that the parents had locked their mentally handicapped kid in the attic, and that he was one of my gang friend's older brothers. We played with him, but he always denied he had any siblings. We were never allowed to enter his house, which was strange, because we were always stopping at our other pals' homes during our days, just to drink water or use the bathroom. About two years later, the boy and his family moved away, never to be seen again. But when they moved, it was discovered that, yes, an older brother did exist, and he was kept locked away in the attic. It was a very creepy discovery. Mental health awareness and acceptance was in the dark ages in the 50s. Number 23. In middle school, our janitor was this kind of mean, gross dude who kids were really mean to, making fun of him and giving him crap nicknames like Dirty Dan. But he also happened to be one of my best friends slash middle school girlfriend's dad. The rumor that the kids threw around was that he was a child predator. I went to their house many times and even stayed over once or twice. He was a jerk and so was his son, and the house was absolutely disgusting. But my friend needed company, so we didn't just leave. It was a sad house, and she was clearly sad. But all she ever said was that he was an angry guy. Years later, I've lost contact with my friend, and we've all graduated high school. The summer after graduation, the janitor and his son were both arrested for child content and assault. I never felt so nauseous as I did reading that article. I wish I knew how she was doing. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click the link in the description to join our community. You can check out this video on your screen in the meantime, and I will see you in the next one.